Hi and welcome to John's Maths Book. In this video we're going to be looking at the mean value theorem. If you like the video then please show your appreciation by hitting the like button and I'd be delighted and honoured if you'd subscribe to the channel. Without further ado let's go over to the whiteboard. The mean value theorem states that if f is a continuous function on the closed interval a comma b and differentiable on the open interval a comma b then there exists a point C in A, B such that the tangent at C is parallel to the secant line through points A, F of A and B, F of B. If we look at the graph on the left, we see the purple secant line here and the green tangent line here. The secant line is drawn between the interval A and B and the tangent to the curve is at point C on the x-axis. The secant line is parallel to the tangent. Let's examine the theorem more closely. It says, for this to be true, the function must be continuous on the interval AB. This means that there must be no breaks in the function across this interval. And as you can see, our function f of x, there are no breaks in the function between the points a and b on the x-axis. It also states that the function must be differentiable on the interval a b. Let's see some examples where a function is not differentiable. With this function here it has a cusp or a corner and is not differentiable at point a on the x-axis. This function here is discontinuous at point a on the x-axis and it is therefore not differentiable at point a. And this function here is not differentiable because it has a vertical tangent at point A on the x-axis. So assuming that our function meets the conditions set out in the theorem, and our function on the left does, then the following is true. The derivative of f at point C on the x-axis, which is the gradient of the tangent to the curve at point C, as shown by the green tangent line on the graph, is equal to the gradient of the secant line, the purple line. In our case, this will also be true at point D on the x-axis. As you can see, there's another tangent line here, which is parallel to the secant line here, and falls within the interval A and B. So let's take a look at the function f of x, which is equal to x cubed plus 3x between the intervals of x equals minus 1 and x is equal to 1 and see if we can apply the mean value theorem. So firstly we need to ask ourselves does this function between those intervals of minus 1 and 1 conform to the rules laid down by the mean value theorem? So firstly is f a continuous function? Well I've plotted f on the left here and as you can see it's continuous there's no breaks in the function. Next is it differentiable? across the interval minus one to one. Well, there are no cusps and corners and there are no vertical tangents. So yes, it is differentiable. So therefore there must be a point or points where the tangent or tangents of the curve are parallel to the secant line drawn between the points minus one and one on the x-axis. So I've now just drawn the secant line on the graph between the points minus one and one on the x-axis. This is shown by the purple line. So the secant line on this diagram indicates the average rate of change between those two points minus one and one. So now we just want to find the point or points C on the x-axis where F prime of C is equal to the average rate of change. So F prime of C represents the instantaneous rate of change. So let's first find the average rate of change. So that's the gradient of the secant line between the intervals, which represents the average change, is given by the difference between the end points on the y-axis divided by the difference in the end points on the x-axis, as shown here. So let's evaluate the function at the end points, basically the gradient of the secant line. If we put 1 into the function, we get 1 plus 3, and then we subtract what we get when we put minus 1 into the function x cubed plus 3x and we get minus 3 minus 3 and then we divide all this by the difference of the points on the x-axis which in this case is 1 minus and then minus 1 so this evaluates to 4 plus 4 divided by 1 plus 1 
which is equal to 8 divided by 2, which is 4. Now we have our average rate of change. We can find our instantaneous rate of change, which is f prime, or the derivative of f. We can then equate this to the average rate of change, which we know in this case is 4, and find the point or points on the curve where the tangent is parallel to the secant line. So f prime of x, or the derivative of x, is equal to 3x squared plus 3 in this case. We can now equate this to the average rate of change, which is 4 in this case. So solving for x, we have x squared is equal to 4 minus 3 divided by 3. Therefore, x squared is equal to 1 divided by 3. So x is equal to 1 divided by plus or minus the square root of 3. So I've now marked in the tangent points to the curve between values of minus 1 and 1 on the x-axis. They're indicated on the graph in light blue. The tangents are parallel to the secant line and occur at minus 1 divided by the square root of 3 and 1 divided by the square root of 3, as indicated on the graph. <laughs>